If you have over $200,000 sitting stagnant in your bank, retirement account, or home equity, then you're literally losing money. On this show, you learn how to get that money working for you consistently and conservatively. Learn to grow your nest egg with your host, Sean Winslow. Let's dive in. Welcome back to another Finance Friday episode. I'm your host, Sean Winslow, and this is the Multifamily Money Podcast. What is going on, everyone? It is Friday. Happy Friday in the summer. There's nothing like Friday during the summer, huh? Especially when it's beautiful out, blue skies, sun's out. Hopefully you're heading to the beach, maybe to a lake. Nothing like it. But we also have some crazy times we that we're in. You know, a lot of geopolitical risk and, and things going on in the world that aren't so great. Are we in a recession? Are we not in a recession? Rising interest rates? You know, what's going on? So I'm sure as you all have already seen, because it's been plastered across all you know, media outlets um, from mainstream to social. GDP growth declined again for a second consecutive quarter, um, declined by 0.9%. So technically how a lot of economists and others read a recession is two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. And we have that, but we have a lot of people out there also saying that this is not a recession, right? Trying to change the, the... the definition that so many have used for so long. Even Jerome Powell came out when in his conference and said that he does not see um, this as a recession. He points, you know, many factors that the economy is strong. And the first thing he points to is the labor market. And what I'll say on that is I've mentioned this before. Usually the lab- labor market is a lagging indicator of a recession. Um, if we go back to the recession of 1973 to 1975, jobs continued to grow for eight months. Not always, but generally a lagging indicator. So he'll point out that our um, our unemployment is still very low, which it is. However, if we do look, you know, in April we we did hit a record low um, for unemployment, but filings have increased by 79,000 as of recently to its highest level of the year. You know, once we see that increase, then you know that is another indicator that we're we're heading towards a recession. And I think we're just we're just in crazy times, right? Where it's it's been so hard to hire people. Um, I don't think we'll know the true reason for probably you know years to come. But I think it's a combination. You know, you know there was a lot of obviously liquidity and capital pumped into into the market. So that allowed people to kind of take a step back and do their own thing. Maybe they created their own business, changed careers, maybe just took some time off. There's definitely the baby boomer contingent who just decided to retire earlier than they had originally planned. I think there's a lot of things. And then it came to, you know, people wanting to be paid more, which I totally get. People, you know, do deserve to get paid more. And, um, you know, inflation growth definitely has lagged overall in inflation, right? Excuse me, wage growth has lagged overall, you know, inf- inflation growth. But I, I think it's, in some areas, it, it jumped too high. And, you know, it's really hurt some businesses because they either haven't been able to hire because they can't afford to pay that, or they're, they did pay it. And now they're in a bind. And I think it's going to hurt people because once things, you know, contract, and you've seen people jump from one job to another to try to get increases, right, which more power to you. But I think that will hurt you in the end because employers hate to see when you had like four jobs in the last year, you know, one to two years, it's like, well, you clearly can't stick around what's going on here. Um, so I do think that will hurt, but I digress from that. I, I just solely think we, we are in a recession now, whether that, you know, lasts a month, a couple months or a year to years, that is still to be seen. You know, it just came out that, you know, Apple, Amazon, you know, revenues are down year over year, revenue growth is down. And same with Facebook. And that's the first time in Facebook's history that that's happened. So there's definitely been a pullback. And on top of that, you have companies holding a lot of expensive inventory, right? Because prices have obviously gone up because we all know supply chain constraints. There's a lot of demand, not enough supply. It's driven a lot of the, you know, inflation plus, you know, printing money. So people, so businesses have bought extra more than they really need because you know of the whole supply chain thing they're they're fearful so they want to you know, they want to stack up and now they have overpriced inventory that they can can't even sell you know i've i've heard of 
someone was telling me that they did at Walmart and Walmart was giving away like a, a bag of 50 masks just to give them away because they, they weren't selling them, right? And they just probably needed to free up space for inventory. And there's other products that are severely overpriced that are on, you know, in inventory on, on these companies' books. And I feel like that's, that's going to hurt, right? We're seeing less growth, less demand, um, and people are just going to have to dump stuff. You know, and it's like people bought a lot of stuff over the last couple of years. Say you bought a bike and you probably overpaid for it, but it might come to a time where you got to sell it because you need money and you're going to sell for cheap. And then, it's, you know, you're going to sell that. And then these companies that have still have that on stock, they're not going to be able to compete with your price and not be able to sell. So I think there's still more to come. In my opinion, we definitely haven't hit the bottom. Um, in terms of rates, yes, the Fed did increase rates again up another 75 basis points. However, the market was expecting this, unlike last hike where they thought it would be 50 basis points and then we were surprised with 75. The, the market knew this was coming. They already priced it in. And we saw we actually saw a drop in the, the 10 year. It, it went down to about 2.6, which we haven't seen it. 2.64 to be exact, which we haven't seen in about three, three months back to, you know, three, four months back to April. Um, yeah. And the, like I said, the market has priced this in and I believe it kind of priced it in from, from the beginning. We've been, you know, kind of flirting with that 3% 10 year yield. Um, we've gone up, we got a, went above it for a couple of weeks, but then, you know, regressed and came back down. And if you look at the forward curve, which I've mentioned before, it's kind of shifted before it was pricing in rate cuts coming in 24. Now it's pricing in rate cuts coming in 23 and 24. Um, so if, if we continue at this rate, we're, we're going to see, you know, rate cuts in a year or less. And I think the market has priced that in. And on top of that, things went crazy in March during the first rate hike, you know, spreads exploded, you know, um, the spread between the 10 and 30 year exploded from about one and a half to over 3%, which caused rates to go extremely high. And we all know that, you know, the 10 and 30 year kind of track each other because the average, you know, 30 year mortgage usually has about, you know, usually seven year, year term or so. So they kind of track one another, but now once we've seen, you know, kind of the fed stick to their plan, a little less hawkish in, in this last meeting, we've seen those spreads, you know, tighten a little more. So that caused rates to kind of, you know, pull back. And now this all could change, but that's kind of where we're at right now and how the forward curve is, is pricing. But I will say if one of the leading indicators to look at for in terms of recession is the spread between the 10 year and three months treasury, three month treasury yield. Um, the last eight recessions were preceded by an inversion and we've gotten pretty close. We, the other day, about three days ago, we were at 0.19%. Now we're at 0.226%, but it has been trending down and quite sharply too. Um, so that's one to, to look at um, for sure. And just overall, I just want like, it comes down to affordability with a lot of this stuff, right guys? Um, can the average person, you know, afford to put gas in their tank? Yeah, we have seen it been coming down, right? And the forward curve on that kind of looks like we're gonna hit under $4. But the thing about fuel is that that can fluctuate and change drastically, right? Like the uh, where you get gas at the pump, they're buying on the future dollar, right? So let's say they, you know, can buy it for four dollars today, but they know they're going to get an increase of four twenty five. Well, they're not, even though the gas in their tanks right now is purchased at four dollars, they need to go purchase. For gas for 425. So they're going to be charging you 435 today, even though they could be charging you four because they need that money to go then buy the oil. So it really all depends. So guys, it really just comes down to affordability. Is the person going to be able to afford to get to work? You know, are they going to be afford to be able to put food on the table? Yeah, we can talk about all these leading and lagging indicators, but it really just comes down to can people that you know the average person can they afford to live? And that's really going to drive a recession, in my opinion, because if one consumer sentiment is going to be way down, which is an indicator. And then two, if people can't afford to buy, they can just buy the bare minimum. That doesn't drive growth of the economy. So we're going to see, we're going to continue to see negative growth. Um, 
again, this is not a doomsday show. I'm just trying to provide you the facts as I see them, as you know, other respectable people that I admire see them and the research I've done. So I just want to get on here and just keep everyone updated. Obviously, this isn't the end of the world by by any means. There's still opportunities out there. We're still underwriting deals every day. You just got to look harder. It's, it's not as easy. Not every deal is going to be a winner. You know, I tweeted the other day that you know we've seen over the last you know two to three years we've seen unprecedented. You can even go back five six years. Um, we've seen unprecedented you know, growth in multifamily. Just any really any real estate um, valuations minus some that were affected by the pandemic. Um, but it, it's just been unprecedented. And you could literally, it's literally like, you know, giving a, a monkey a dart and throwing out a board and picking a winning, you know, <laughs> real estate investment. It, it, was, it almost it was almost like guaranteed. Um, and that's going to change going forward. And podcasts that I have coming out, I don't know if it's not this Monday, the following Monday, the guests and I talk about that. We talk about it's you know it's really going to come down to two main things: buying right, so buy at a discount. Um, don't don't let emotions take control. Like I got to get a deal. I got to get a deal. Um, buy right, buy at a discount, and then number two, operations. Come it really just comes down to operations. You know things are getting tighter. You're going to have to really keep an eye on collections because, as I said, you know it's going to come down to can people. You know, especially if you're, you know, investing in B and C class properties, not so much, you know, B plus and A, A properties, you know, those people, you know, generally make a really good salary and can take, you know, not, are not as effective in a recession, but in the B and C class properties, you know, they are affected. They get pinched the hardest. And so you really have to keep an eye on collections because at the end of the day, it's going to come down to, you know, the, they can use their money to pay for food they can use their money to put gas in the car so they can go to work so they can pay for that food or are they going to pay for the rent? And I think we all know the answer to that. It's, you know, they're going to, they're going to pay, they're going to use their money to get food on the table. And then they're going to use the money to put gas in the car so they can go make money so they can get food on the table. And it's just got to keep an eye on collections. I'm not saying that no one's going to pay, but this is something you got to get in front of and manage. You know, you got to have someone on your property that is leading that charge and make sure that, you know, this is important, right? And that they're going to be out there knocking doors, getting people to pay, if not creating creative um, payment plans to help people out. So then we want to help them out as well. You know, it's not so, we're not like, not just simple business, right? But yeah, it's going to come down to operations because everything's going up. You know, our, your margins are going to get thinner. Yes, and yes, uh, rental rates are going up. But again, it comes down to affordability. There's only so far you can push it in that B to C class area. All right, guys. Well, as always, I think your time. Just want to get on here and, and share you where what I feel where it's going. I still think again, there's a lot of opportunities. You just got to buy right. You know, it's a great asset class to be in, um, even with rates going up, inflation skyrocketing, um, uncertainty. It's still a great place to be. It's a it's a cash flowing, real asset. That you can use leverage, you leverage smartly to acquire, and then other people's money are paying down that debt, thereby increasing your equity. Um, and we all know how well it does in inflationary, you know, environments. Your that debt is, if you buy it fixed, it's fixed, right? And it's based on nominal dollars, not inflationary dollars. So, you know, your that biggest expense, your debt, is fixed, and you're paying what you paid on day one, what you'll pay on day 300, 1000, right? Um, so just keep that in mind. Powerful tool, powerful asset to be in. Just got to buy right and manage correctly. All right, everybody. As always, easy doesn't pay well and instant gratification is self-destructive. So always remember, it's not working hard for your money, not just working hard for your money, but having your money work hard for you so you can get out there create the life of your dreams for yourself for your family for those you care about so we can all just crush it and make this world a better place all right everybody thanks for tuning in hey this is sean winslow after being in the financial service industry for years and having candid conversations with good people just like you 
I realized that so many of us are wanting an investment strategy that provides solid returns and consistent income without the bumps in the road. There's little known secret that your financial advisor doesn't want you to know. There is investment out there that is less volatile and the returns are stronger. Get more details by going to greenbriarcg.com and clicking on the free e-report. And by the way, if this show has provided you any value, then feel free to leave an honest written review and of course, share it with a friend who needs it. See you next week for another great show.